you will need an encounter with the spirit of prayer and supplication please write it down this is one of the dimensions where the prayer ministry is irreplaceable if it is the next level and the next move of god there is no there is nothing you will do to replace the ministry of prayer jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 please write it quickly call on to me and i will answer the revelation is an answer it's a response I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that are not yet captured in your experience call on to me call on to me let me tell you something I've observed and I, I say this respectfully and I think it's a correction that the body of Christ needs to get there are few believers who pray for edification most believers have left the ministry of edification to prayer most of our prayer is either warfare or request there's nothing wrong with warfare there's nothing wrong with request but let me tell you the dimension of the growth dimension of prayer is for edification where you don't enter the place of prayer with a prayer request where less than five percent of your prayer is in english you are not just entering to harass God you are not just entering to say Lord there are powers sitting on my destiny leave destiny the goal is edification and you feel the growth you feel the stressing from your spirit man very few believers pray for edification you can know it because you stand near them they are weak as weak as whatever they love God but their capacity is weak strength is discernible is why we fall off over everything you don't get this miracle you don't get that miracle you harass God all around but there is a level of strength and stability please hear me the next move of God will come on the wings of genuine prayer thank God for miracle service don't get me wrong there is a place of supplication and all of that and there is a place of intercession for others but can I tell you this those who were here many years ago in Zaria will tell you there were few times when many people today that are greatly used by God around there were few times where people took out time to actually pray for their own request believers who gather and just are praying no prayer point no prayer request is towards the end of the prayer they'll just say Lord just to let you know we have not eaten and we trust your grace for supplies just to let you know that we have this 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 issue but the average believer right now prays but our prayer does not bring the level of growth and stamina because that prayer is largely driven by lust the need for things so i can go to pray and spend six hours there correct well done but that six hours is almost five hours of harassing God. When will the power come, oh God? Is that prayer? That's inquiry. You've not started praying. There are few believers who can who can pray if a request is not, if a prayer point is not raised. You want them to pray, you have to raise a prayer point say this then they say oh, i am now follow and i'm praying turn it into a prayer point but when you say let's pray they just stand and say so what should we do now and other people are praying and they are just watching but when it's all right everybody stand up lord jesus lord jesus my life my life this and that this and that i'm not saying anything is wrong with that but have you learned the edification ministry of prayer the edification ministry to the point it used to be a big deal to be filled with the holy ghost if you were not filled with the holy ghost it was as if you were naked when believers gather by yourself you will find one brother and say sorry can you pray for me it used to be a project but right now there are believers who can be in a place for many years they know about being filled with the holy spirit 
and they don't argue it but they have not seen the need they just feel oh, one day if it happens let me just be fit capacity capacity there are set there are certain levels of grace and anointing that is a waste to come to you it's like pouring a drum of water inside a cup it doesn't make any sense you need to expand please tell somebody expand 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 you don't expand by preaching you don't expand by going for ministration you don't expand just by by doing bible study for others you don't expand by conducting deliverance for others no you have to lock yourself lock yourself look at jesus the word of god filled with the holy spirit while others are sleeping they are the ones who need him he will get up in the morning and pray for hours it was a daily habit to the point that when it was time for him to go to the cross from the communion the upper room he branched Gethsemane and prayed there he spake a parable to the end prayer is an instrument that we can use to correct anomalies I agree but please hear me learn to get into the place of prayer without prayer points the prayer point is you the prayer point is you many of those things will be answered when you are answered the prayer point is you there are many many requests that are a revelation of weakness when you access strength with God you will check and not find the prayer points again and you are looking at time you are not praying you are praying you you pop tom tom you are not praying five minutes you know let me tell you this god loves everybody but he rewards seriousness god rewards seriousness there are pastors who are like that every two minutes you are leaking something or swallowing something there are times that you go to pray my brothers and my sisters you don't know whether you are on earth or you are in heaven you don't know it's a realm there are many things about prayer when it's said most believers don't know because that is a progression in a realm that you must get to for that thing to make sense we must pray our weaknesses are becoming very glaring we must pray for capacity in fact most people never sought anointing it was a byproduct of some of these things they didn't even know that anointing was to be sought directly now all and sundry you see a lazy people around crying for Benny Hinn's grace in in the secret place five minutes lord the, a, a double portion of what is on Benny Hinn. let it and god is trying to say no 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 i can give you just i don't want any he, who, you know if you are god you give good gifts to those who love you and god said this is not how it works have regard for Benny Hinn, not just god you want a double portion of his anointing and you are there five minutes snoring back five minutes snoring back no revive your prayer life revive your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life please hear me revive the edification dimension of your prayer life don't just pray needs don't just pray warfare pray to grow pray to grow that's how many of us enter the realms of visions it was not a conscious request you pray your way till you break the gates that closes this realm and the next realm prayer like a system of transport revive your prayer life 
Say amen. There are men of God who don't pray. They are praying for me. That's a deception. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Let me tell you this. If you are a man of prayer and you are edified through prayer, there is a signature that, that the strength and the health of your spirit man is written upon you. Are we together now? Your communication and everything shows that there is a track record of prayer. You can stand on stage and mumble tongues and people look and the, the scarceness. You know that this one is just, is just, it's not just the huskiness of your voice. There is a, it, it, the deep calls on to deep. People know that this one, mm -mm, you have, you have, it's like creating a hole. There is a, a position your leg can stand in prayer. When you find a widespread congregation not praying, it's because the leaders don't pray. You only transfer to people out of the abundance of the grace that is on you. Please learn to pray. Don't pray when you have a meeting. This is what people do. When they have conferences, they now organize imaginary um, um, five or seven days prayer i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but if you have to wait for a program to pray you will never be powerful in this world everybody say prayer i'll find a place to stop so that we can continue a man of god said something that blessed me i think it was dr paul Enenche. I heard something that he said I, I scrabbled it somewhere and it, it blessed me I said boy I was going to share this I can I can I can't find it again but I think he was talking around the fact that it was it was something about prayer how that when prayer changes you then everything that belonged to the old you will have to go with the old you because you are now changed are you seeing that now yes it's like changing an house. i don't need to carry the tree that was in my former house i didn't like it so i left the house the tree goes with it when you are changed many requests change too he spake a parable listen the church started on the wings of prayer and we must pray we must pray those listening to me please pray it doesn't matter what nation you are in pray you don't have to be the president of anything to pray right now this obsession about coordinator i'm the coordinator of a prayer group so i pray if you pray because you are a coordinator you are a hypocrite coordinate yourself behind a tree coordinate yourself behind a door and sit down and pray if there's no space in your house use your bathroom use your toilet lock up that place and pray stroll out in the night and pray you don't have to shout and harass the people there but pray if your bed is uncomfortable stand up from it stand up from it don't pray one leg is on the ground 20 or 40 percent of your body is on the bed and you are praying god knows you are weak he doesn't leave you weak he gives you strength prove that you have received it by standing up don't have to have a bad dream then you wake up and say you don't know, I will show you that I'm a member of Koinonia Shaka, ta, 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 ta. No, no 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 make deposits of that prayer so that while you are sleeping the prayer is like you praying there are people who are praying even when they are not praying yeah? their prayer has created a prayer motion that even in their sleep prayer is going on their prayer has become a portal for angelic activities they don't have to pray for it to start call on to me call on to me call on to me you're welcome to overcoming daily motivations thank you for being there as we spread the gospel to illuminate lives and save people from the oppression of the devil we would like to bless you with our latest video sermon titled, What Happens When You Have Sex With Who You Are Not Married To? 
powerful motivational video. This sermon is very instructive and provides practical diverse ways to avoid such sexual urges. Kindly sit tight and watch the trailer. It opens the door for demonic spirits to wreak havoc in the relationship. The Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 says, Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. Remember, sex is as spiritual as it is physical. In the act of sexual union, two bodies become one. It was so stated at the dawn of creation. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. This being so, if a believer should be joined to a harlot, it would be the same as making a member of Christ be a member with a harlot. The two would become one body. Believers' lives are greatly altered when they are joined to Christ. The union affects both the believer and Christ. When a believer commits immorality, he or she is dragging the union with Christ into the illicit relationship and Christ cannot and will not be members with an harlot. By quoting Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, that the two shall become one flesh, Paul illustrates the seriousness of sexual sin. If your partner has lived promiscuously in the past or present, then the gates for demonic transfer and possession are automatically open to be inherited by the other party. And God cannot behold iniquity, the Bible says, for he that is joined unto a harlot is one with her, and he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, which is why God could not behold Jesus Christ on the cross because Jesus bore our sins in his body on the cross and God being holy cannot behold iniquity. The consequence of this is that you may remain in a valley without any access to the promises of God and be exposed to all the vicissitudes of life until you cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. This is very scriptural and it is true. Check it out in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1, the NKJV. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Number 3. It will turn off God's supply of favor from reaching you. As Christians, we know that God frowns at it. The Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that commits fornication sins against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? A very typical example from the Bible is the story of Samson, taken from the book of Judges, the 13th to the 16th chapter. Judges chapter 16 verse 20. Samson obviously, under a demonic spell, told Delilah all his heart as a result, taught that he could do as before and free himself from the bondage of his enemies without realizing that the Lord had left him. Because the presence of the Lord is favor and the Lord departed so favor departed also from Samson. Check out the scriptural reference below. And she said, the Philistines are upon you Samson, so he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. That is Judges chapter 16 verse 20, the New King James Version. Click the link in the description to watch it on our second motivational channel. Please click the link in the video description below to watch the video. And also click on the second link to subscribe. Then hit the bell icon to turn on all notifications just so you don't miss out whenever we upload. And finally like and share to be a blessing to others also. Thank you and God bless you. We wish you a prosperous 2021 in Jesus name.